Square Enix has faced a lot of backlash over the past few months. Their president said developers need to have creative freedom, yet they force developers to censor content that could be seen as offensive. The Chrono Cross remaster censored dialogue. They've infuriated gamers with their plans for NFTs, and now they've decided to sell out of the West because they've sold all of their Western studios and their IPs in a deal worth over $300 million. I have a few different things to show off, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And of course, if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon for just a dollar a month or support the channel via YouTube membership. All of the links are in the description, and of course, I do really appreciate all of the support. So I wanted to start with this Ars Technica article. It says Square Enix sells all of its Western game studios and their games to Embracer. On Monday, Japanese game publisher Square Enix confirmed that it was selling all three of its Western video game studios, along with many significant game series and IPs attached to those studios, to the European game publisher Embracer. This sale includes game studios Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal. All three had previously been wholly owned by Square Enix, and Embracer will acquire their entire staffs, combined at roughly roughly 1,100 people, along with popular IPs such as Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and Legacy of Kane, and a game publishing catalog of over 50 games for $300 million. Now, $300 million is quite a lot of money. Obviously, it's not the scale of an Activision Blizzard acquisition um, or some of the other acquisitions we've seen in the industry over the past couple of years, like Gearbox, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but this is still a massive chunk of change. It says not all of the deal's IPs have been confirmed thus far, however, and an announcement from Square Enix indicates that its Western operations will continue to publish franchises such as Just Cause, Outriders, and Life is Strange. This suggests that Square Enix will retain some of its Western-specific IP, and that its future collaborations with Western game makers will come via publishing deals with outside developers. Now, a lot of these IPs are historically important to gaming, and there's quite a few uh, games in these franchises that have done well and been popular, but we haven't seen them in years. Deus Ex had a release in 2016, but it's been years at this point, and it was short for an RPG. Legacy of Cain hasn't had a release in over a decade, and it's only now that the original game, finally, after a lengthy legal battle, got a release on GOG. If you look at this catalog of IPs, yes, it's an impressive historical catalog, but what was it making them? Not money, that's for sure. I mean, the only one that's made them money is Tomb Raider. Marvel's Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy lost them hundreds of millions of dollars, and the other games have just been sitting unused. I definitely wasn't expecting to hear Square sell out of all of their Western studios and IPs. Maybe they just feel like the type of storytelling that's being written and created out of these Western developers isn't in line with their focus and what their Japanese developers want to tell, even in lieu of the censorship from their ethics committee that's come to the West in their own titles. They did keep a few games like Life is Strange, Outriders, and Just Cause, which could be because of licensing deals and the fact that their current IPs that are somewhat popular, but besides that, they dumped everything else. It really does feel like it's being done because, yes, these IPs are stale, but they don't want to deal with the Western style of storytelling. Look, I enjoyed the first Tomb Raider relaunch in 2013. The other two weren't as good in my opinion, but they were okay for the most part. Clearly, in trying to retell Lara Croft's story, they toned down the character, which a lot of people didn't like, and which was a big problem I had, but the only one here that I see that I know makes them money is Tomb Raider. 
It says while console manufacturers Sony and Microsoft have racked up headlines thanks to their own megaton game maker acquisitions over the past few years, Embracer has quietly built its own roster of predominantly European studios over the past decade. It was better known by the name THQ Nordic beginning in 2014 after picking up the rights to that fallen publisher's name, though not all of its games. Its biggest acquisition in the past 12 months have included uh, the video game maker Gearbox Software and board game producer Asmodee Games. Looking at the balance sheet, however, those two deals each exceeded $1 billion, while today's Square Enix deal falls well short of that number. Again, $300 million is not a small amount of money. It is still pretty large. The discrepancy feels curious in light of Square Enix itself, announcing that Tomb Raider's lifetime game sales have exceeded $85 million during the series 25th anniversary celebration in October. I do truly feel like this purchase was all based off of Tomb Raider. I feel like Tomb Raider is the largest name that's here. This is what people I think care the most about. People love Tomb Raider, care about Tomb Raider, want the best for this franchise. I do as well and it's very popular. But they decided to now sell it. It says, as a comparison, that sales number is neck and neck with one of Square Enix's most beloved game series, Dragon Quest, which had sold over 83 million games as of August last year. Since it's a full IP acquisition, Embracer will also likely claim claim the rights to Tomb Raider's legacy as a Hollywood film series, though the company has yet to confirm whether previously rumored Lara Croft-related productions, one live action and one anime, are still in the works. But it goes into Square Enix's failures over the past few years that I've definitely talked about, like Marvel's Avengers. It says Square Enix's recent handlings of Western properties has had some issues, that's putting it lightly, some issues, particularly after it put a ton of its Western studios' eggs into one uneven game-as-a-service basket of Marvel's Avengers, only to see its 2020 launch fall well short of critical and sales expectations. Uh, I talked about Marvel's Avengers a lot here on the channel, and it was a complete and utter disaster. It lost them hundreds of million dollars, and then on top of that, you've got Guardians of the Galaxy. That was also not as loved as they were hoping. Unfortunately for them, uh, the past few game releases they've had haven't been super popular, haven't been beloved, haven't lived up to the expectations fans have had. And I also wanted to bring up this IGN article that people have been talking about. It says Square Enix says Embracer acquisitions allow it to invest more in the blockchain, AI, and the cloud. Now, I'm someone who is willing to give companies chances to see what they can do with new ideas and technology. But from what I've seen, most people don't want things like NFTs in games and refuse to support titles with them already. Look at what happened with loot boxes. We tried to give companies a chance with those, and unfortunately, companies took uh, advantage of people with those, and the same thing will happen with NFTs. And when a company who's admitted to focusing on NFTs is talking about investing money in other new ideas, yeah, it could go well, or it could be another disaster, and a lot of people are very skeptical about these statements. After hearing this news, it truly does sound like they're done with Western game studios and they just want to focus on the content they know people like and they want to focus on the game studios they know are creating franchises that are making them money. But this doesn't change my opinion of them at all. They have still censored so much content and done such a terrible job with translations and focusing on selling games to modern audiences, aka made-up audiences that don't really exist, I don't plan to support them more even after hearing about this. I'd love to be more hopeful, but they've done too much bad for me to forget and act like they're going to magically change overnight. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed and found this important and informative, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.